Hey, good morning, everybody. So, uh, yeah, I'm Steve Mullaney, and um, I'm the CEO of uh, AV Atrix, and we build advanced networking and security services for the multi-cloud enterprises. Actually, we used that line before I even came to this conference, so I didn't uh, create that just for this conference. Um, and, but we also do that by abstracting, uh, by embracing and extending the basic constructs of the greatest underlay ever created in mankind, the public hyperscaler clouds of AWS, Google, Azure, Oracle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, when, and then what we deliver to enterprises is a common set of networking and, and security services that they can, then, they can then use and abstract away, if you would, the, the low-level constructs of those public clouds. I mean, if you talk to every enterprise and you ask them, are you, are you moving towards strategically leveraging the infrastructure, the basic infrastructure of public clouds? And I think everyone will say yes. I believe in that. But what happens is I think people want, and this is what we're getting from enterprises, is um, I need the same level of security, performance, reliability, all the enterprise abilities, I call it, right? Because I've got compliance, regulation, all those things that I did on on-prem, I wasn't doing those things for my own fun and games. I had to. And when I move into the cloud, I need to be able to do those exact same things and I want the optionality to be able to leverage anything and everything underneath that. I don't want to definitely just align to uh, low-level constructs. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the beginning of, of, of really of, of, of the power of computer science, really. It's just abstraction from underneath those, those lower levels. So um, I'm really excited uh, today. So enough about me. I don't want to talk about me or Aviatrix at all. Um, I'd like to introduce Mark Leonsoon, who's uh, VP of Network Engineering at Jefferies here in, here in the city. Uh, he's been in networking for a long, uh, pretty long time, um, and um, I wanted to just kind of fireside chat and go through his journey uh, to the cloud. So thanks for joining me, Mark. Thanks for and having maybe me. Maybe just uh, kind of an introduction to you and, yeah. you know, and Jeffries and give everybody a sense sure. of what you're doing. So um, just like Steve mentioned, I'm uh, VP of Engineering at Jeffries. Um, Jeffries is a global company. So from a networking perspective, we manage everything networking from routers, switches, firewalls, wireless, down to phones. Um, so which means any issue that anyone has, whether it be, I can't log in, it's a network issue. Or, you know, my VDI is not working, it's a network issue. So um, from a perspective, from a network engineer, you know, your responsibility is the entire bank. Right. which we cater to on an everyday basis. This, this means if the managing director comes to you and says, hey, I want to move to the cloud, the first place you start is the network team. You could have all the application ideas, you could have these storage ideas, application owners have these you know, great ideas of what they want to do. It means nothing without uh, the network engineering right. team. So um, you know, our day to days includes making sure that everyone is satisfied and building a network that everyone knows, hey, if we fail in US, it's all right you're not gonna see an impact. If you fail anemia, it's okay. You're not gonna see an impact. So more fault tolerant right. is what we, you know, we try to do at Jefferies right. too. And so it's a small team, right? How big is your team? Very small team. So globally, right. it's only about uh, six of us. Okay. So yeah. you, that phone rings all the time. And you have um, a lot to do. We have a lot to do. I think right. we're the team that works 24-7, 365. <laughs> um, we get in seven in the morning. Uh, sometimes we don't leave till about seven, eight yeah. at night. Uh, so we, there's a running joke, we open Jefferies and we close Jefferies. <laughs> and so, you know, the thing I know about in networking, if anything ever goes wrong, whose fault is it? It's a networking team. Network right? issue. It's always a network issue. Always has been. Always has been, <laughs> right? And that's just, that's just the, what, you, what you take. Yeah. So maybe, uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, five years ago and even before, you know, when you would talk to financial institutions and even just any large enterprise and you talk about the cloud, they would say, over my dead body. There's mm -hmm. no way we're going to ever move to the cloud. Mm -hmm. About five years ago, it kind of changed, where they said, e maybe we will go to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then about a year ago, I noticed everybody said, we're going, and we're going hard, and we're going in now. Yeah. What, maybe start talk. what was your journey at, you know, over mm -hmm. the last couple of years at, at, at Jefferies, and what made you decide to, to go into the cloud and kind of talk about that a little so bit? So I think it also it starts at the top, management, yeah. their visibility, okay. and then it's a trickle-down okay. effect, right? So management's idea was, look, we have all of these data centers. Why not have a primary data center and use the cloud as mm -hmm. a failover? We have all of these applications that are not you know, compliance sensitive. Why host them in the DR center when you could just put them in the cloud, give them primary and backup okay. in the cloud? Right. And you know, because their motto is, look, the data center should be shrunk and things should be moved mm -hmm. to the cloud. 
So our first journey was to like test out what can the cloud do for us. So from a network perspective, you know, a lot of research got into it. And when was this? This I was pray. almost about uh, two years ago. Okay, two years. About two years ago, um, we had a small cloud infrastructure, but it was more plug and play. Okay. Go ahead, do what you want. Okay. No applications were being hosted. It was okay. more application owners testing what they can and can't do. Okay. It became serious uh, a year and a half ago. Okay. Working in financials, I'm pretty sure everyone knows when it becomes serious, you know, it's hey, we need it now. Mm -hmm. So um, what we took initiative of doing was uh, we gathered everyone together. Uh, Jeffries is in a siloed place. So right behind me is the application team. Right in front of me is the VM team. Right next to me is the storage team. Right mm -hmm. next to them is the Windows team. Right. We all get in a room. Um, what we did for two or three months straight, we defined our governance, our standards, and the things that we want to do in the cloud. Right. A lot of back and forth. A lot of, no, I don't want to do this. No, you shouldn't have so that. So really working on an architecture. Working on an architecture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with that said, we all gathered in that room for three months, two or three months, took everything back. And then we went to our respective teammates and says, hey, this is what we need to do. Okay. This is what we need to discover. This is what we need to provide okay. to allow these application owners to now start right. moving um, to the cloud. Okay. Um, and that's the, the key thing, I think, about cloud is you can't silo yourself when you want to move to the cloud. Right. Because an application owner may have an idea, but the network can say, hey, I can only support X, Y, and Z. Right. Same thing with the storage. They may have an idea. They may want to work with a third party vendor, but the network says, you know what? that may not be supported for us. Right. So right. Th that's the approach we took to the cloud, and it got serious when um, a lot of the uh, financial application owners realized the, the capabilities that they could have okay. in the cloud. Then we started a full-on journey there. Okay, so more the app, the app side really started driving. Really started which I think driving. is always how it goes. The network mm -hmm. responds to the application needs, right? right. It's not there, for, the, the network is there for one reason, one reason only. Right. It's application infrastructure. It's application. there to provide application you know, performance and, and security and so forth. Mm -hmm. So what was your, from a networking perspective, mm -hmm. then what, what, what did you first reach to? So what, did I, what we started doing is looking at the different solutions that were out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go to your big providers, your right. big vendors that are out there. The looking legacy at what vendors. The legacy yeah. vendors. Yeah. Um, from a high level, what we realized is uh, the cloud is like the, uh, you know, the mom that you, you can't bring any girlfriend over because she just doesn't like. <laughs> so no matter what you overlay on the cloud, you're always going to run into the issue. Yeah. And what we took that back as and we said to ourselves, everything should be cloud native from a network okay. perspective. Okay. Because cloud native is basically telling you no matter what you put on top of us, you're still going to have to deal with us. Right. And we don't want to we didn't want to have to run into two different vendors that we had to deal with. Let's say AWS doing AWS and then doing a third party router. The third party mm -hmm. router vendor says, hey, no, I'm seeing it on the AWS side. And then AWS says, no, this is not how we do things. Right. So we decided leave third party out and just use native. Okay. Now, when, once we decided to use native, we said to ourselves, okay, it's six of us. We're part of the network team. We have thousands of things to do. Right. Who's gonna be the one to sit down and learn the AWS components and the AWS language? Right. No one really raised their hands. Yeah. And that's when we came across Aviatrix. Okay. What we needed was a turnkey solution that we could point and click right. and deploy an entire network yeah. inside of AWS. Right. Which, and I'll give you a, a good story. We started with one solution uh, from another vendor. It took us about three weeks to this deploy. Is before you found Aviatrix. Before we found Aviatrix. Yeah. It took us yeah. three weeks to deploy. We did a pen test. We, did, we checked security parameters on it. Had so many holes in it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a good solution. Jumped to the next vendor, did the same thing. Wasn't a good solution at all. Found Aviatrix. Oh, you, I didn't know that. You tried two. We tried two vendors. So what he tried to do was take, mm -hmm. which is I think what a lot of people would try mm -hmm. to do, because I always say the only reason anybody's not using Aviatrix is because they never heard of us. Right. Um, but so what do you do? You go to your existing networking vendors, and you mm -hmm. go to take their basically virtual appliance mm -hmm. and try to jam it on the cloud. Guess what? It doesn't understand mm -hmm. the native constructs. It's not cloud native. The operational model is horrible. Mm -hmm. I think you found all this. Found all right? that. And said, yeah, there's a reason I'm not taking mm -hmm. the, the, the virtual routers and virtual appliances from the existing vendors mm -hmm. and trying to jam it into the cloud. It doesn't understand account. It doesn't ac understand the concept no. of multi-account. <clears throat> there's no yeah. such concept to that in an on-prem world. Yeah. Right? And, it, it, and again, what it, what it builds is complexity. So right. when you're troubleshooting something, you have to say to yourself, is it AWS? Is it this third party vendor? Or okay. is it me? Okay. But if you're using native tools, it's AWS if it's okay. an issue. Okay. Um, and that eliminates a lot of bottleneck right. when it comes to troubleshooting things. Okay. So 
the other vendors that we tried took us weeks yeah. to even get it up, deployed the way we wanted. Okay. And even then, you still had holds. When we found Aviatrix, it took us literally 20 minutes. Okay. What that we did long? was that, that long. long. Yeah. So what we did was we, did, we said, hey, these are our standards. I was joking. That was, yeah. <laughs> so what we said, these are our standards. We said, yeah. hey, in AWS, we have this financial uh, side of the business that has this BPC. We have the, you know, this other financial you know, mm -hmm. side of the business had this BPC. We want them to be able to go out to the net, have people talk to them when they open, you know, when they have web hosting applications, mm -hmm. but they can't talk to each other. Right. We were able to accomplish that within about 20 minutes with the, right. with the ABA, ABA tricks, being That's able to deploy the VPC, being able to um, segment them via routing, and also being able to have the visibility because you guys automated the deployment of our firewalls. Right. So we were able to not only deploy uh, a networking solution on the native AWS construct with ABA tricks, but we were also able to see what they were going out to the net doing and who was coming in talking to them okay. and provide them that extra layer right. of visibility. Because you know, our motto is this, well, my motto is this, and I share this with my team, is you have to understand what V you're chasing in the cloud. Either it's victory or visibility. You could jump and you know, throw your hands and say, hey, Claim we're victory. in the cloud, and yeah. say we're in the cloud, but then you, or you're in the cloud because of victory because you, you know, now you open yourself up to hacks. Right. Now you have a, this big spider web of things, because now when a, uh, another application comes on, you don't know, you know how things should work. Yeah. Or do you want that visibility to say to yourself, I'm in the cloud and I could actually see what yeah. these application owners are doing. Yeah. I could see, hey, we have a, you know, a possibility of getting attacked yeah. and I know where I could lock it down. Right. So you know, that's our motto yeah. um, in the cloud. Right. And I think um, Aviatrix helped us get there much quicker yeah. and it allows us to focus on other things now. Right. Multi-cloud. Right. You know, now we have application owners that say, hey, we want to explore something in Azure and we need to keep our same concept same mm -hmm. thing for compliance, uh, you know, the same way we do in AWS, same way we do on-prem, we need to do it in Azure. Exactly. Um, and providing that turnkey solution that allows our team to point and click works seamlessly okay. for us. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So talk a little bit about, I know you're, you, you have Palo Alto Networks and, mm -hmm. and you wanted to bring them in, into the firewall. Did you, mm -hmm. did you look at that, doing that prior to using um, Aviatrix, or, or, or yeah. once you were working with us, you realize that there's a great integration. So, <laughs> we have a great integration with Palo Alto. Yeah. So, so Palo was one that. of the ones we tested, and they had a solution. A couple of years oh, I didn't even need to call them out. That was <laughs> no, it's all right, because they realized, because we, we know we got on their back. They, they had a concept called, the, they were in the transit VPC, you know, okay. creating VPN okay. connections. Okay. Okay. It right. just wasn't scalable. We, okay. we, got, we told them, like, this, this solution's not scalable. Yeah. No, one, yeah. no one's going to do this. Right. As the cloud grows, this doesn't grow. Yeah. So what they did is they worked hand in hand with us and you guys too. Okay. We got direct access with their software developers. Okay. And we gave them a concept. We said, hey, look, we have this application that auto scales on demand because so many people are trying to you know, download files from it. So they auto scale instances on demand. If we deploy your firewalls, I don't want to do firewalls based off of IP addresses. Right. I says, we tag all of our EC2 instances. Give me something on the Panorama or Palo Alto that reads these tags. Mm -hmm. So as something's auto-scaled, those tagged IP mappings also gets populated to the Palo Altos, mm -hmm. and the users don't have to worry about anything. Right. Traditionally, what would have to happen is, as they auto-scale, they'll have to call us and say, hey, we auto-scaled. Now, can you just permission these few IPs for mm -hmm. us to go out or mm -hmm. come in? Mm -hmm. Now we don't have to do that. But okay. working with you guys in Palo Alto, you guys were able to deploy a, you know, to supply a, a, what you call an automated DMZ solution, right. which was four firewalls in a DMZ, all right. active, which right. means I don't have to worry about auto scaling my firewalls. Yeah. I could deploy a huge firewall. Right. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have all the workload for my cloud yeah. because it's all being load balanced between yeah. all four firewalls. Yeah. Um, but Palo Alto and you guys, the, 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 the partnership that you had helped us helped us actually deliver the applications much quicker. Yeah. So what we have now is an automated solution that sits over everything. Yeah. So when these application owners puts in a request that says, hey, this is my application, these are the URLs, these are the sites I need to go to, it's automatically pushed to the firewalls, the tags get, 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 gets populated, and we're out of the picture, yeah. okay. which was our main goal. Okay. Our main yeah. goal was never to be the bottleneck. Yeah, the managing yeah. director would come to us and say, you know you guys are the bottleneck. Yeah. But with this, I was able to tell them, yeah. No, I think that I think that's great. Your whole your whole concept of actually any service organization, and when you think about it, that working mm -hmm. as a service organization, 
The goal is to actually get yourself out of the way, right? Yeah. Get it such that you don't have anything to do. You, know, you never mm -hmm. get there. You still have a thousand things to do, yeah. but that's the goal. Make it self-service, mm -hmm. uh, make it sim simple. I mean, so, you know, one of the things in, in Aviatrix, you know, when you think back to client-server networking, you know, the Cisco world of, mm -hmm. of on-prem, I don't know if this was the stated objective of Cisco. I used to work there, but it felt like it. Create complexity, and then we're the only ones that can actually be smart enough to solve it, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to the cloud, it's, it's actually about creating simplicity. It's not about managing complexity, it's about creating simplicity. Yep. Is, that, is that something that you think yes. is a philosophy yes. for yeah. you? I, and I always believe, I, I look at it this way from a network engineering standpoint. The great engineers can leave a company and the other engineers that are left behind can run the ship mm -hmm. with no issues. Yeah, that's great. The, the ones that, that are not good engineers leave the company and the company is in mayhem. And that's the way I look at it. Keep it simple. Right. We don't, I don't like to add complexity in any part of our environment at all. Right. What we always ask, because we have engineering meetings, what are we accomplishing? Why do we need to buy this? Right. What, what are we actually doing? Because creating complexity puts you further and further into mm -hmm. the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. What I think Aviatrix does, Aviatrix does is keeps it very simple for us. Right. If we say we don't want one VPC to talk to the other, point and click. Right. And that's it. And, right. and the modifications that are made inside of the native AWS constructs, again, is very simple. You're just modifying the AWS routing tables. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. No, you're not putting agents on the instances. You're not doing anything. Because if you look at it from a networking perspective, in order for one instance to talk to the other, the first place they have to go is their gateway, which is attached to the route table. Mm -hmm. If you modify that route table, mm -hmm. that's keeping it more simple mm -hmm. than anything. Right. Whereas to your point where you have some of these other companies that like to add complexity, you know, you have to modify the gateway, you have to modify the route tables, you have to modify route maps, you have to right. adjust access lists. And then you may be the only one who knows how to who do knows that. Who knows how to do it. And then you don't someone... have any weekends, and if you ever leave, the company is screwed. Exactly, and then yeah. someone comes behind and fat right. things at access lists and opens everything up. <laughs> so I, yeah. I think simplicity is what, um, what you guys have given us, and it, 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 it stays with our standard. Okay. Like our standard across the board is just keep it simple, right. but secure. Right. So where do you think you are in the journey, journey to cloud? Yeah, I think um, after having conversations with a lot of other network engineers and other financial yeah. spaces, you know, I have a lot of friends that right. there. I realize how far we are. Yeah. You know, and I didn't realize how far we got within a year until speaking with them. Right. Even non-financial mm -hmm. um, co former coworkers that I yeah. have. Um, we've already started moving applications to the cloud, yeah. websites to the cloud mm -hmm. as well to seamless you know, mm -hmm. migrations. Um, we're in the process now of building out a DR solution for our cloud. Um, right. We even have a concept where if we ever have a failure at one of our campus sites, because we have a huge virtual environment, mm -hmm. a lot of our stuff fails to the cloud. Mm -hmm. We have did all of that within a year. Right. Um, this includes people that are, have um, VDIs. Right. We were able to fail them over yeah. to the cloud. Yeah. Um, and again, I didn't realize how far we are. I thought we were way behind you know, until I started um, speaking to other people. I think uh, uh, James Weinbrenner, who's our new VP of sales, says, go slow to go fast, right? Yeah. So when, when I'm a huge fan of, I always say architecture matters. When you, mm -hmm. when you architect things correctly, um, Yes, it might take you three months to go through that process of architecture, mm -hmm. but once you architect things correctly, the deployment then goes through. And so Correct. many humans and so many people, whether it's architecting your life or what you do, when you architect things, mm -hmm. and IT is a product, and you architect it correctly, you have 20 years of happiness. Yes. If you don't architect it correctly, 20 years of pain, right? It's that yeah. simple, and I think you guys, I think you started maybe a little late, mm -hmm. but you, you accelerated through because I think you architected things correctly. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of, the, one of the things that we find and that what we're doing um, with our enterprise customers, actually helping them from a networking and security infrastructure perspective do that architecture. Mm -hmm. And I think the right thing is whether you're in AWS or, or multiple, it's, 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 you don't design, you, you have the optionality and you design it such that it makes it easier, even if you're just on one cloud with multiple regions and so mm -hmm. forth, but giving you that, that flexibility and that decoupledness, if you would, to be able to run. So it, mm -hmm. multi-cloud ends up being an end result that gives mm -hmm. you that flexibility because that's the right architecture. Do you, do you agree with that? No, I agree, I agree. And, and I think what happens when it comes from a networking perspective, when you sit down and do these architectures, it's the understanding of the cloud language that you have to deal with. Right. I don't necessarily see the architecture as a hurdle, but mm -hmm. understanding 
having, making sure the network engineer is understanding the components and the, the different languages that AWS speaks right. as compared to what you speak on-prem. Right. Being able to make that correlation. Mm -hmm. I think a, a good network engineer can give you a DR solution. Mm -hmm. But a great engineer can give you a DR solution and can tell you the, the language difference between on-prem mm -hmm. and in the cloud. Mm -hmm. I think what you see now, even talking to you know, other colleagues that's making that journey into the cloud, understanding the cloud language is where they hit that right. hurdle. Right. They have the idea like, hey, I want to fail yeah. over to the cloud, I want to do this, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I could call Akamai and tell them, flip me over. Right. But when you start asking them, hey, you know about Route 53? Mm -hmm. Do you know how the uh, Transit Gateway works? Right. No. no. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest hurdle, and I think what's going to have to happen is people are going to start looking at tools that can say, you know what, can you cover up the fact that I don't know that's right. what, what a transit gateway is? Can you cover up the fact that I don't know how a VPC operates yeah. and just get me there? Yeah. This is my criteria. Yeah. I just want to be able to you yeah. know, click a few you know, buttons and get there. It's funny. Um, Vandas, who's a customer of ours, uh, mm -hmm. partner of ours here in New yeah. York City, we did a four-hour um, mm -hmm. Uh, kind of a workshop with customers, and when at the end of it, uh, Andy Siegel, who's the president, said, you, you guys talk to us in the customers like you're network engineers. Mm -hmm. you, and so what, end, what ends up happening is enterprises need to be brought to the cloud mm -hmm. as opposed to the cloud pushed on them because they don't understand it. So they need somebody who can help them, and that's really what our software does, is it, 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 it handles that translation, if you would, yeah. from the cloud, so as we understand the cloud, we're in the cloud, we, we understand that natively, the solution does, as well as we understand BGP, BGP requirements mm -hmm. and things that I gotta go and do that are normal on-prem yeah. data center things, and, and handles that translation. And, and I, what, what happens is it also starts with the person. Yeah. They have to be willing to say, it's time for me to make that transition. Yeah. Um, you know, if you look at it from a network engineering you know, perspective, uh, financial space, we deal with multicast all the time. Right. Because that's, the traders right. work off of multicast. Mm -hmm. uh, from a network engineering perspective, that technology hasn't changes, changed in 30, ages. Yeah, 30 years. I think that <laughs> one of the most recent book came out from Cisco for multicast. Before that, the prior book was 19, I want to say 93. Yeah. Right? So you have to get those engineers to readjust, right. to say, look, this is what's new. You're gonna have to adapt mm -hmm. to it. Right. So it starts with that engineer first, making that, that commitment to saying, look, I have to start branching out, mm -hmm. exploring these things, understanding it, because this is what the bank wants. Right. Now, while they do that, to have a solution on place that can help them gradually, such as you know, Aviatrix, to say, okay, I'll show you how the VPC works and I'll make the deployment much easier. Right. You know, have the ABA tricks on one side, but at the same time, brush up your knowledge mm -hmm. on AWS, brush up your right. knowledge on Azure right. and, and, and how it works. I think the cloud isn't going to be successful unless, and, you know, I hate to say it, unless network engineers make that adaption. Right. Because just like I mentioned, you could have all of the application owners from your business that wants to do these fancy things. You could have database team, mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. But they're going to come right back to you and say, connect us yeah. to the cloud. And network has got to be there. Network's yeah. got to be there. No yeah. one's going to connect to the cloud without a network. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we've got a five minutes left or so. Mm -hmm. What, um, from a directional perspective, so mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're halfway there or 70% mm -hmm. of where you want it. You know, there's always, this is the next 20 years, of course, it never yeah. ends. But what are some things that you're, you're, you're thinking about you know, over the next few years that you want to get I to? think one of the most important things for me, and, I, and I'm going to reinvent, I'm going to try to push to see if I get this, is uh, visibility, much yeah. more visibility. I yeah. think being able to make an application dependency mapping in the cloud. Okay. Being able to provide application owners to say, okay, you spun up this application, this is, this is who you're talking to in the cloud, this is your mm -hmm. bandwidth, this is how much, every, everything that you're using. Mm -hmm. This is the traffic, this is how many people I see logged into it. Right. Because what happens now in the cloud, you, you know, for us, we want that visibility. Right. We want to be able to give all application owners their own dashboard so they mm -hmm. understand their communication. They understand when, when and how they failed over. Right. And not have to pick up the phone because they realize when they press the enter button, yeah. they're not able to get to that. So in a very self-service way, where you can get out of the way and give get them the, the tools that they, they yeah. can actually uh, look at things themselves. Yeah. So yeah. I, to me, I think our main focus is uh, visibility. I've been on that prowl for the for the so, past. So I mean, month. the thing that's interesting about that is most people, when they think, okay, I'm, I'm moving from on-prem to the cloud, I want to mm -hmm. have, I want to, I don't want to get lower. I want to have the same level. Mm -hmm. of visibility, the same level of debug, all the things that I had. Mm -hmm. And that's what they, that their goal is, just give me the same. 
But I think when people are going to move to the cloud, what they're going to realize is it's going to get better. So yeah. exactly some of the things that you talk about, which is a key mantra of what we do, we call it extreme visualization, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a central controller, distributed gateways, we have visibility into everything mm -hmm. that on-prem you didn't have because mm -hmm. you're, it was a proprietary vertical stack and you maybe didn't have information into that Cisco router or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. In the cloud is this wonderful thing called APIs. Yeah. There's APIs everywhere. There's data everywhere. We have information. We know all, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just extracting that yep. and then visualizing, visualizing it. it. And so I think what people are going to realize is when they get to the cloud, the V for visualization is going to get much better. Yeah. Extreme visualization. Yeah. And, and I think for invisibility. Yeah. And I think from a, like a like information, you know, IT sec, you know, that's a different division yeah. within Jefferies, and they don't let you do anything. Right, and that's one of their main drivers. Like, we have no problem. You know, this is their saying. We have no problem with you guys going to the cloud, but provide visibility. Yeah, we need we need to know yeah. exactly what's going on because the thing yeah. is, the cloud is reachable to everyone in here. Yeah. Right. So you and again, you're running on someone else's underlay. Yeah. You don't know what they're doing under no, that no. because you're building an overlay yeah. on top of it. Yeah. So, and again, I think visibility is the most important yeah. key. You know, it's funny, I, I, again, talking to a lot of different enterprises, and um, they laugh. I mean, all of them laugh, like, mm -hmm. like you, you're kind of saying, is they go to Amazon, mm -hmm. and they say, uh, when something goes wrong, I need to know here. And Amazon says, well, nothing's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And they go, OK, let me say it again. When something goes wrong, I need to know, and they say, and, and, they, and Amazon just says, no, it's a service you don't really need to know. Mm -hmm. What they say is, no, I'm the type of person I need to know. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't met a network engineer yet who says I don't need to know. Right. Because I'm going to get fired, right? Yep. And so I need to know. And you know what? We're going to make this enter enterprise class. So that visualization mm -hmm. is something also that we, that, that, that we provide yeah. people. Because, again, you have the basic constructs of AWS, so the basic the basic constructs, and that's, I think, what the cloud's going to provide. They have to. They have to cater to the basic level of functionality because they have to do it across all the regions in the world, and they don't really want to put a big instance because it is a service and they want to make money. Yeah. So they provide that basic level functionality, mm -hmm. and then anything that Jeffrey needs on top of that or Avis Budget Group or whoever it happens to be, United Airlines, mm -hmm. any of our 350 enterprise customers, they they go and say, that's not good enough for me. Right. I need this BGP knob. 100 routes, that's not enough. That's not enterprise class. Uh, there's so many things with native services that, it, that Amazon and others deliver that aren't enough. But that's, that's the way it should be. It should and be. then on top of that, you, you have services mm -hmm. like from someone like Aviatrix that go and then give you all those advanced services that yeah. embrace all those basic constructs. So when Amazon comes out with additional basic constructs, guess what we do? Beautiful. Something mm -hmm. else we can leverage. We don't have to do on our own. Right. We can go kind of like you. Mm -hmm. We can now go focus on something else. Yep. So we'll plug holes where we need to plug holes. We'll round edges where we need to round edges. And hopefully, over time, there'll be more and more that the basic constructs yeah. will do. Is that no, fit that, with, with that, how that you view things? Perfect sense. Because I, I think for us, we design with the concept of, just like you mentioned, SLA. You know, Amazon may say our SLA is 99.99%. It'll never fail. Well, we design, say, you know, your SLA is 1%. You, we know you're going to fail, right. but we need something similar to, let's say, SD-WAN, mm -hmm. right? You know, before that came about, no one knew exactly what Verizon and AT&T were doing along the path between your data centers. Mm -hmm. They just were alerted to say, say something, there was a hiccup in Verizon. Mm -hmm. But now there's this software defined where we can monitor what's going on in your underlay, and we do the flip over ourselves. Right. And, I, and I think for us, that's the model that we took on with the architecture, being able to monitor what's inside of AWS, like let's say mm -hmm. our path to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I mentioned, we're hosting web applications. We're monitoring those applications. We don't monitor it with AWS native tools. We monitor it at a scrubbing center. Mm -hmm. So the minute we see something happen with AWS, we flip everyone over to right. some someplace else because we don't take every, we don't take any vendor's word for granted when they say, yeah, our SLA is 99. Yeah, yeah, yeah SLA is 99.9%, but that one instance that failed just threw a whole application yeah. off and lost us a right. billion dollars. Right. So, you know, th that, that's the model we take. We don't, we don't really look at anyone's SLA. We okay. don't, because we know yeah. anything could happen. Yeah, There's yeah. a possibility something going wrong yeah. that could affect, um, you know, cause us an outage. Okay. Yeah. Um, any last uh, words of advice for other network engineers? Engineering groups? Um, 
well, how can I put it? <laughs> I, I, would, I, I would always say it always starts with your team, yeah. right? If you're a network engineer and you want to make that journey to the cloud, the first thing you do is, you know, write everyone's name that's on your team and just highlight who you think is going to join you on that journey. Once, the, once you have those names down, you start taking it into perspective and says, you know what, let me go out there and see what we need. Mm -hmm. That includes sitting with the applications team, the uh, database team, server team, w Windows engineering, mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, what is your drive in the cloud? What are you looking to do? Right. Once you get all of that data, then you could build your architecture. Right. It doesn't make sense to build an architecture without understanding the application yeah, that's going there. Right. Um, another thing that I will give to network engineers is um, something that someone told me when I first started in network engineering, never have a tunnel vision. Don't think that everything is just network. Right. Uh, start looking at coding. Start even looking at developing your own applications mm -hmm. just for your network, to monitor right. your network. Um, what you would find is you may find some network engineers with tunnel vision, right. and those are the companies that will never get to the cloud. Right. Um, I would say that to a network engineer. And last I would say is do a lot of research before you get onto the cloud. Right. Don't hesitate to meet up with coworkers, I mean, former coworkers or whomever friends that are in the cloud. Right. Get all that data. Once you get all that data, try to correlate it and see how it fits in your company and take a slow, but slowly but sure migration right. to the cloud. You know, take your steps wisely. Great. Yeah. Great advice. I think we're out of time. That was fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thank you for your business. All right. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, guys.